We've got a diverse set of topics on this week's Threatwire. A rare macOS vulnerability was disclosed by the Microsoft Threat Intelligence team on October 17th. The vulnerability, dubbed HMSurf, is listed under CVE 2024-44133. HMSurf allows bad actors to gain access to a Safari user's data, including browser history, as well as the affected device's camera, microphone, and location without user consent. The infiltration works by exploiting the macOS transparency, consent, and control software known as TCC. TCC is actually something users interact with on a regular basis. For example, when asked for permissions for access to the computer's microphone and camera when using any browser. HMSurf only affects Safari users of computers managed via mobile device management or computers that are a part of a larger organization like an employee distributed computer. It works because Safari, as an official Apple application, has access to special permissions and bypasses the regular TCC permission configs. HMSurf uses the directory service command line utility to change the user's home directory, modify files to remove the TCC protections from Safari, and then restore the home directory. This will then force Safari to use the modified TCC configuration files. Apple released a fix for the CVE in September. The fix included new endpoints for the app group containers that make the system integrity policy that prevent TCC files from being modified by external attackers. These new APIs are actively only in use by Safari. However, Microsoft will be working with other browsers to explore the chance of using these APIs to help secure their configuration files. We find the Internet Archive under siege by bad actors. This time, users received emails from the official Internet Archive Zendesk account. This attack may sound familiar. Last week, we covered how Hackermon Dev cracked into the Slack instances of multiple Fortune 500 companies by email spoofing to direct access Zendesk tickets. It's dispiriting to see that even after being made aware of the breach weeks ago, IA has still not done the due diligence of rotating many of the API keys that were exposed in their GitLab secrets. As demonstrated by this message, this includes a Zendesk token with perms to access 800,000 plus support tickets sent to info at archive.org since 2018. Whether you were trying to ask a general question or requesting the removal of your site from the Wayback Machine, your data is now in the hands of some random guy. If not me, it'd be someone else. As the hacker said in the email, the attacker was able to get access to the Zendesk account via exposed GitLab secrets. The emails were all legitimate, passing the necessary DKIM, DMARC, SBF authentication checks, and sending server verification. According to the original report, Bleeping Computer had tried to warn Internet Archive that the source code, quote, was stolen through a GitLab authentication token that was exposed online for almost two years. As a reminder, the Internet Archive engineering team consists of only 12 people and manages over 100 petabytes of data at time of writing. They're doing important work for universal knowledge, and I think it's time we let the Internet Archive breathe and get back on their feet. Anyways, they're hiring engineers and other technical roles, so if you want to help protect the Internet Archive, you can apply. The Chinese Journal of Computers published a new article detailing how RSA encryption was broken using quantum computers. The team behind the research article named Quantum Annealing Public Key Cryptographic Attack Algorithm based on D-Wave Advantage was able to demonstrate new techniques that enabled the breaking of a 50-bit RSA key. The break uses the D-Wave quantum computer, the first commercially available quantum computer with quantum annealing processes. Quantum annealing is the process of using quantum mechanic principles to apply to some complex optimization problems. The issue with modern quantum computing is the lack of computation power required to break basic encryption. Breaking RSA is not a novel concept. In 2020, someone was able to break an 829-bit RSA key without a quantum computer. What makes this different is that experts believe this breakthrough in quantum cracking will accelerate the timeline to a full 2048-bit key break. 
A bug in the Call of Duty anti-cheat software was causing innocent users to get banned. The bug was surprisingly simple. The Call of Duty anti-cheat software, called Ricochet, would scan game memory and check for certain signatures generated by cheating engines. Ricochet would use plain text ASCII strings for their signature bytes. The issue was that the anti-cheat engine would scan all memory associated with the game, including user chats, viewed usernames, and more values that were stored in memory. Anytime that a certain sequence associated with this specific cheat bot appeared in the game's memory, that associated user would be flagged as a cheater and banned from the game. This means a spammer could go into any lobby or any game and spam messages in chat that would trigger Ricochet to label the receiving users as cheaters and get them banned. The team behind Call of Duty has implemented a workaround to fix this vulnerability, as well as restored the affected users. Thanks so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of October 21st, 2024. If you want to support this ad-free show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. Thank you so much for your support. I am filming a vlog, a little Threatwire BTS, and I will have some time to do a little Q&A in the video. So if you have any questions for me or about me or about filming Threatwire, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer them in my BTS vlog. If you want to find me online, including where you could watch this vlog when it's live, you can find me at Ending with Ali on everything, including Minecraft and Blue Skies. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.